Hey everybody, a long time ago I made a video about why mods should enhance games, not fix them. And by a long time ago I mean at this point it's nearly a decade since I made that video. It'll be a decade as of next year. But anyway, it came back into my mind because of the game you're seeing right now, which is Stone Hearth. It's a colony building game by Radiant Entertainment that was first released in full in 2018, although it had an early access period leading up to that. And the real basic problem with it is that it released in a blatantly unfinished state. There was a bunch of stuff that the developer promised from the Kickstarter campaign that just wasn't really implemented in the game, and it still had a few performance issues and glitches and such that really needed to be ironed out, but the developers stopped supporting it. Because apparently they were bought out by Riot Games, and thus they had to drop support for it, because Riot just wouldn't let them work on it or something. I'm not entirely sure what the whole mess was there, but basically the game was unfinished when it released, and at that point it was more or less up to the community to implement any of those features if they really wanted them badly enough. And thankfully the game does have some pretty extensive mod support and of course Steam Workshop support, so the community can, and already has, modded in quite a few of those features and continues to do so to this day. Now of course that sort of thing isn't all that uncommon, at least not with PC gaming, but what is uncommon is what the developers did with that, because they didn't just release the game, update it to a certain point, and then just stop and say they were completely done with it. They officially announced a specific mod pack that is more or less aimed at finishing the game for them. It's called the ACE mod, which stands for Authorized Community Expansion. It is officially recognized by the developers. And in fact, at a certain point, it wasn't when I installed this recently, but at a certain point, if you had a previous version of Stonehearth already installed, it would automatically subscribe you to the mod and download it for you. Now, as I said, when I installed the game recently, it did not automatically install the Ace mod. I had to go onto the workshop and specifically subscribe to it before it would actually download that. But regardless of what it did, I was still left with the dilemma. Do I actually play this thing in its original state and review it in its original state, or do I install and use the Ace mod because it seems like that's what the developers intend for you to do? That's a really weird situation. I can't think of really any other games that do something like that, where the game released in a blatantly unfinished state compared to what they said they were going to do with it, they say the game is finished anyway, and then they just turn it over to the community with an authorized community expansion that basically adds in the stuff that they said they were going to put in, but just didn't. I know with this particular case, there was probably a lot of weird stuff going on behind the scenes, especially with the whole Riot acquisition and all that, but suffice to say, it got me thinking about mods again, and how some people are still confused about my policy on reviewing games that have heavy modding support, or that are basically, air quotes, fixed by mods and such like that. So I thought I'd do another video on the topic and explain things a bit more thoroughly and what kinds of mods I deem acceptable for review versus what I don't deem acceptable. So let me get this out of the way first. I don't review mods. I never have, and I never will, because mods are not standalone games. At absolute most, a mod will get a My Thoughts on video. The only real exception there is if a game started out as a mod, but eventually got developed into a full standalone game. Even then though, chances are I'm probably not going to do a full review of those types of things unless they are released to the public for a price, like say, Counter-Strike, Day of Defeat, Killing Floor, Red Orchestra, that sort of thing, or if you're talking about more recently, stuff like Wrecker. All of those started as mods, but eventually developed into full standalone games, all of which were released with a price tag attached to them. So those are all fair game for reviewing, but basically any other mod would get, at most, a My Thoughts on video. And I say at most because chances are I'm probably not going to cover them at all. The simple fact of the matter is I already have an extensive backlog of games that I need to review that are all full standalone, released as purchase price kind of stuff, and getting bogged down in mods just wouldn't really be productive. So that's why even though there are certainly a few mods that I might actually cover on the channel, you generally won't be seeing all that many, and I really don't respond much to requests to look at mods either. But what about when mods actually factor into reviewing a particular game? Well, that's where things get a bit more complicated. Because my policy is that a game needs to stand on its own before I even consider mods. 
And there are a fair few people out there who seem to be completely unable to comprehend this simple fact. I really don't care how good a game's mods are. I care how good the game itself is. If it can't stand on its own, if it isn't worth its price of admission on its own, then frankly it doesn't matter how good its mods are. The game itself isn't worth buying. And no amount of people shrieking, but DW, if you mod this game, it's amazing, will ever change that. If, however, the game is able to stand on its own, and it is worth the price of admission up front, then I might mention mods and how they make the experience even better, because that is what mods are supposed to do. They are supposed to enhance an already good game. There is, however, a category of mods that I exclude from this logic, and it is specifically with regards to older games that do not work properly on modern systems. So we're talking things like source ports, compatibility mods, widescreen patches, things like that. Because sure, those mods are fixing issues in the game, but they're not necessarily issues that the game had back when it originally released. You gotta keep in mind that development standards are going to change over time. And what works at the time a game is developed isn't necessarily going to work, say, a couple of OS versions down the line, or maybe even some hardware revisions down the line. It's not necessarily the fault of the developer that what worked at the time the game was made doesn't work a few years in the future, or especially many years in the future. And since source ports and compatibility fixes and widescreen patches and such like that are all meant to alleviate those issues that have just come up over time and weren't the fault of the developer, I make an exception for them. And that exception includes the stipulation that I don't count them for or against the game. So if, for example, I have to install a mod to get a game to run in widescreen and that introduces some weird clipping issues or something like that, I'm not going to hold those against the game because I know those are caused by the widescreen patch. If, however, there was an issue that a game released with back in its day and there's a mod to fix that, I might still use the mod, but I'm going to actually hold it against the game because it shipped with that issue. One of the prime examples of this is when a game ships with a low FOV and I have to use a mod to fix the FOV. Because that's a conscious design choice by the developers. It's not some weird compatibility issue that came up over time. Low fields of view have always been a problem, one that should never, under any circumstances, need mods to fix. And before you say anything, no I don't count it when a game has console commands that allow you to adjust the FOV, because that's built into the game itself, it's not a mod. So now you know how mods are going to factor into my various videos, but what about the inevitable side effect, where people who really aren't paying all that much attention to what I'm saying about this stuff will just think I'm anti-mod, that I hate all mods or something like that, which is completely ridiculous. If a game has a very active, vibrant modding community, that's a good thing. If you like modding the hell out of your games, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when people start using it as an excuse. I mean, you'll see this in particular with Bethesda games post-Oblivion, where people will make all manner of excuses for the games being ludicrously buggy, for them running like crap, for them having really awful writing and awful game design, because, well, the modding community fixed all of that when the appropriate mentality to have is that it should never have been a problem in the first place, and it is downright insulting that the mod community has to fix it. And if you don't hold the developers accountable for releasing games in broken, buggy, barely playable states, etc., then you're actively encouraging them to just keep doing that. Because after all, if they can make money hand over fist on a game that is released in an absolutely garbage state and doesn't really get any better until the mod community starts delving into it, then what incentive does that developer have for actually improving? Because after all, in a case like that, the modders are basically doing the developer's job for them and paying them for the privilege of doing so. In a situation like that, you'd have to be stupid not to take them up on that offer. Because while there are certainly limits on what you can get away with in that regard, if you already know the modding community is going to air quotes fix your game for you, then frankly there's no reason not to put in the absolute minimum amount of effort and no more. And the sad part is it seems like people have gotten so much more accepting of crap like that 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 bar just keeps going lower and lower and lower. And the lower that bar goes, the more people making excuses for crappy games by saying the modding community fixed it pisses me off.
So that more or less covers everything regarding mods that I can think about at the moment. If you have any questions about the channel's policy regarding mods, or you want me to clarify something a bit more that I talked about in the video, feel free to leave a comment. But hopefully now you have a much better understanding about my standpoint on mods. And as for Stonehearth, if you happen to be interested in that one, I'm not really sure what I want to do with that video yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to review it with or without the Ace mod, and if I do review it with the Ace mod, what I'm going to do with that. So... I'll figure that out at some point. That'll probably take a while. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in later videos.